So now let's take a look at some of these commands. Uh, we'll just stick with the sphere, and for now I'm in the Mel tab. Oh, let me actually walk you through one, one little detail about how the script editor works. Is you can type stuff down here, let me zoom in on that a little bit, and then when you execute it, the code that you execute will go up here, any results will go up here, and any errors will go up here. So this can get kind of cluttered fairly quickly, and if you want to just clear the top area here, you just click on this little icon right here. So that's a little eraser and it's on the top. Now if you want to click your code stuff, that is going to be this one. I would not recommend you do this uh, because it doesn't save unless you saved it. So as soon as you run it, it'll show up here. So if you do hit this button on accident, hopefully you've executed the code recently and come and grab it. Uh, this icon will, uh, will erase both windows. So I try never ever to touch either one of these just this one. So if I click this, it's going to clear the history and I'll get a nice clean uh, output here so that I can see what's going on without too much trouble. So if I just write the word sphere and then with Mel, the way that you tell Mel that the line is done is you put a semicolon at the end of it. Uh, Python does not require a semicolon. It has a little bit of a different way of navigating uh, through the code. And if I hit the two options here, I can hit the double arrows and it will leave the code here so as I'm iterating, if I don't want to have to constantly keep repasting it, I could just hit the double arrows and it will write the code, basically echo back the code, and then give me the result. So the result is going to be NURBSphere1 and then make NURBSphere1 and these little forward slashes here, that that's uh, Mel speak for this isn't code, this is for the human being reading the code. So for instance, if I come over and put a couple forward slashes, it turns red, and this is called a comment now. So if I want to say, uh, keep notes about what it is that the code is doing, because when you've got lots and lots of code, it can be pretty pretty easy to get turned around. You can just put a little comment in there, and also if you have a scenario where somebody else is going to have to come in and modify your code after the fact, this is a super nice thing that you can do for them, and you should always, always, always do it whenever you hit a new section of code. So let me kind of give you an example of the density that I like for my coding, or my, my commenting. So here I've got a little snippet of code, and this is what it's doing. And then I've got sort of a, a, a line above each little section, so w with each step, uh, it will get a little bit of, of English in there to describe what is going on. So, with the sphere command, I'll just give myself a little bit of space here, here we can see we've got a sphere. Now if I go to the uh, UI here and I create a sphere, I'm going to get a lot more information. So when I wrote sphere down here, I got a sphere and it looked just like this. When you execute that sphere using the UI, you get a whole lot of extra details here. So what is all of this stuff? These are called flags, and they specify details about the command. So every single command has a series of ingredients, well not every single one of them, some of them like maybe it's just delete doesn't have a, uh, a flags. I'm not sure if it does or not, but that would be an example of one that might not. Uh, but Sphere most definitely does, and the reason that it does is because it's got lots of different ingredients, lots of different attributes. So it's got the uh, axis, so it's going to be up and Y, we see that one there. Um, <clears throat> and radius, and this is going to be the start sweep, is going to be at 0 degrees, and end sweep is at 360, that means it's going to go all the way around. So all of these little things here mean something. And you might be asking yourself, how would you find out what that little flag is? So it's actually pretty simple. You can execute a command, and then down here, you want to highlight it, and then middle mouse button, sorry, uh, that's going to be right mouse button, hold down, and you will get this menu, and one of the options here is command documentation. So we'll open it up, and here we go. The command is sphere, the language that we're speaking is mel, and here are the flags. So when you execute mel script, let me roll back over to Maya here. It is going to use the short version of the name. You can use either one. After a while, you'll probably use the short version too. But let me just go back to the command documentation. So again, that's right mouse click command documentation. So you can see we've got dash radius and dash r are going to be the exact same thing. That just means radius. Start sweep, end sweep, and so on and so forth. 
and you can see what kinds of information it's looking for after the flag. So radius is going to be a number. Uh, you've got angles. Boolean is kind of a true-false. Um, so that's going to be yes or no. We've got integers and so on and so forth. So um, you can be sure that you are inputting the correct data after your flag uh, via this way. And this is going to be kind of important as we're converting our uh, commands from uh, Mel into Python. Now, on this same window, you can very easily just click Python version, and it will take you over to the Python version, and you'll see it'll have all the same flags, um, but the syntax is a little bit different. So let me hop back over to the Mel version for a moment. Down here, at the very bottom, and I find this to be oftentimes the very most useful part, is the examples. So you can see the code here, and I don't know if this is easy for you to see, I think I can zoom in here. So what this line here does is it's going to make a sphere with a radius of 10. So if I wanted to make that exact same thing using the Python, we can see what that'll look like down here. So as you can tell, the, the uh, command here is a little bit different, but it performs the same function. So we'll get into the, uh, the details of translating uh, the email into Python in probably the next the next lesson here. So let's look at another command, and this is this next thing that I'm about to do is one of the reasons that I think teaching scripting in my in Maya is just super duper awesome, and that is I can actually do stuff here to the object. So I'm just going to scoot it this way, and now we have a new command. Let me zoom in on this window a little bit. So what you can see is it is a move command, and then I've got a dash r here, and then three distinct little sets of numbers, and each one is separated by a space. So this is classic Maya MelScript syntax. We've got the command, and then a dash and a letter, so this is going to be what we'll talk about in just a moment, and then the arguments that that flag is expecting, and then a semicolon. So we learned a minute ago that uh, in the case of the, the sphere command, if I say dash r and then give it a value, that's going to be a radius argument. But with the move command, the r means something different. So it's very important that you understand that just because the letter is the same, that does not mean that it is the same piece of information. So in this case, let's just mouse over move. We'll go ahead and highlight that right mouse button and then go down to, actually it looks like it needs to be down in this section, so I'll just go to move. You can see it's command, so it turns blue. So down here I get the command documentation option. And here if I scroll down, I can see that R means relative. So whenever you have a transform, like scale or rotate or move, you've got sort of two options. One of them is going to be absolute, and one of them is going to be relative. So what that really means is when I'm moving something relative, it is a movement that is relative to its current position. Uh, whereas if it's absolute, it's going to be measured from the origin. So um, in this case, what this R is specifying is that this is a relative movement from its current position of negative 0.27 blah 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 in whatever axis that is. So it's going to be Y. So we have X, we have Y, and we have Z. So that covers the basic introduction to commands using MEL, and in the next section we'll take a look at translating them from MEL into Python.